I find Savitri so beautiful. It, it just comes deep into my heart. Now, Sri Aurobindo is known, he, he calls himself a poet, but he was also a freedom fighter, uh, a spiritual teacher, a philosopher, and in fact, he was even nominated for a Nobel Prize, right, for literature. But I, I want to know, Dipti and, and Joy, can you tell me, there's so much that uh, I, I want to know, has he written about himself? Or is it just through other people's letters? Sometimes when in his letters to the disciples, he'll say something about himself, but it's in passing. He doesn't like to talk about himself. He, he, it's as if he hid himself behind all his actions and that he wanted humanity to look at his actions and actually become those actions to manifest what he wanted. But there is one really beautiful, touching poem which she wrote uh, 3536. And uh, we know that at that time the yoga had descended into the... Because this is a yoga about going down into the planes of the subconscious mm -hmm. and the in inconscient. The very thing that no other yoga has wanted to tackle, Shurabindo is tackling and he's walking through this hell that okay. is the darkness at the core. And there is a poem that he calls a God's labor, mm. where he speaks about what he's going through. Uh -huh. And I think if you listen to that poem, you discover a little bit of what Shurabindo himself experienced. Ah, enjoy. You're going to share. You're sharing that with us. Yes, yes a God's labor by Shurabindo. I have gathered my dreams in a silver air between the gold and the blue and wrapped them softly and left them there, my jeweled dreams of you. I had hoped to build a rainbow bridge, marrying the soil to the sky, and so in this dancing planet midge, the moods of infinity. But too bright were our heavens, too far away, too frail their ethereal stuff. Too splendid and sudden, our light could not stay. The roots were not deep enough. He who would bring the heavens here must descend himself into clay and the burden of earthly nature bear and tread the dolorous way. Coercing my Godhead, I have come down here on the sordid earth ignorant, laboring, human grown, twixt the gates of death and birth. I have been digging deep and long, made a horror of filth and mire, a bed for the golden river's song, a home for the deathless fire. I have labored and suffered in matter's night to bring the fire to man. But the hate of hell and human spite are my mead since the world began. For man's mind is the dupe of his animal self. Hoping its lusts to win, he harbors within him a grisly elf enamored of sorrow and sin. The grey elf shudders from heaven's flame and from all things glad and pure. Only by pleasure and passion and pain his drama can endure. All around is darkness and strife, for the lamps that men call suns are but halfway gleams on this tumbling life cast by the undying ones. Man lights his little torches of hope that lead to a failing edge. A fragment of truth is his widest scope and in his pilgrimage. The truth of truths men fear and deny, the light of lights they refuse. To ignorant gods they lift their cry, or a demon altar choose. All that was found must again be sought, each enemy slain revives. Each battle forever is fought and refought through vistas of fruitless lives. 
My gaping wounds are a thousand and one, and the titan kings assail. But I cannot rest till my task is done, and wrought the eternal will. How they mock and sneer, both devils and men. Thy hope is Chimera's head, painting the sky with its fiery stain. Thou shalt fall, and thy work lie dead. Who art thou that babblest of heavenly ease and joy and golden room to us who are waifs on inconscient seas and bound to life's iron doom? This earth is ours, a field of night for our petty flickering fires. How shall it brook the sacred light or suffer a god's desires? Come, let us slay him and end his course. Then shall our hearts release from the burden and call of his glory and force and the curb of his wide, white peace. But the God is there in my mortal breast who wrestles with error and fate and tramples a road through mire and waste for the nameless immaculate. A voice cried, Go where none have gone, dig deeper, deeper yet, till thou reach the grim foundation stone and knock at the keyless gate. I saw that a falsehood was planted deep at the very root of things, where the gray sphinx guards God's riddle sleep on the dragon's outspread wings. I let the surface gods of mind and the life's unsatisfied seas and plunge through the body's alleys blind to the nether mysteries. I have delved through the dumb earth's dreadful heart and heard a black mass bell. I have seen the source whence her agonies part and the inner reason of hell. Above me, the dragon murmurs moan and the goblin voices flit. I have pierced the void where thought was born. I have walked in the bottomless pit. On a desperate stair my feet have trod, armoured with boundless peace, bringing the fires of the splendour of God into the human abyss. He who I am was with me still. All veils are breaking now. I have heard his voice and borne his will on my vast untroubled brow. The gulf twixt the depths and the heights is bridged and the golden water waters pour down the sapphire mountain, rainbow ridged, and glimmer from shore to shore. Heaven's fire is lit in the breast of the earth, and the undying suns here burn. Through a wonder cleft in the bounds of birth, the incarnate spirits yearn like flames to the kingdoms of truth and bliss. Down a gold-red stairway wend the radiant children of paradise, clarioning darkness's end. A little more, and the new life's doors shall be carved in silver light, mm. with its aureate roof and mosaic floors, in a great world bare and bright. I shall leave my dreams in their argent air, for in a raiment of gold and blue there shall move on the earth, embodied and fair, the living truth of you. Wow. I feel like we go into the, the darkest depths you know, he, he takes us into, this is his experience as well, right? Going into that depth of, from a, a, a Western paradigm, the depth of hell, mm -hmm. right? And then there's so much hope. There's so much grace mm -hmm. and, and beauty mm -hmm. that's there. Mm -hmm. 
that's so beautiful. And that music that led us into this, Joy, that that was you. Was that you mm -hmm. that was doing that music? Yes. Yes. And that was your gift, was it? To, or your and it honor? is Sri Aurobindo's Gayatri. Mm. Uh, oh. The Gayatri Mantra is a, is a meter. Gayatri is a meter. And it, there is a Vedic Rishi, Vishwamitra, who has composed a Gayatri, which is sung all over India. Oh. And it's one of the most powerful mantras. Mm. But Sri Aurobindo has created his Gayatri, which is a mantra for transformation. Yeah. Because it's a very, so it, it is like a Moola Mantra, the root mantra for anyone who turns to Shivindo and that's joy. So we will hear it again. Om Tat Savitur Varam Rupam Jyotih Parasya Dheemah Yanna Satya Nadipayet Satya Nadipayet Om Tat Savitur Varam Rupam Jyotih Parasya Dheemah Yanna Satya Nadipayet Satya Nadipayet Om Tat Savitur Varam Rupam Jyotih Parasya Dheemah Yanna Satya Nadipayet Satya Nadipayet Om Tat Savitur Varam Rupam Jyotih Parasya Dheemah Yanna Satya Nadipayet Satya Nadipayet